Thank you. I feel like the first time here. When, when he introduced me, and I've been so long since I've been to church, I said, I feel like I'm starting a new church. How is everybody? Amen. Is it really feel good to be back to God's house? Huh? Let's just get stand up and give God a hand. Come on. Let's just give God a hand. I love what the pastor said a while ago. It was a test. It really was a test. See, we was thinking about the coronavirus, what would stop us from coming to church. We was thinking about anything else. Didn't think about the weather. Didn't think about the weather. Some things we just have to do. You know, I, I, I lift up the elders to you because I was out here Saturday morning and me and Pastor went skating out here in the parking lot. <laughs> and that's how slick it was. I am serious. It was slick. My right iron, it was slick. You couldn't even walk on it. And so they made the right call. And I, and I you, you know, anybody can fall and break a hip, young or old. But when you're older like me, it takes a whole lot longer to heal. So we don't need to do that. Amen. We just need to be obedient to God. But anyway, look, God laid on my heart tonight. Is anybody excited besides me? Oh, come on. Just get excited. I mean, this. When you see this, if that don't get you excited, there's nothing. Something's wrong, Pastor. Following Jesus means changing the world. How many here truly are truly, listen, don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand first. Wait a minute. I want to make sure you know what you're going to raise your hand for. How many truly are following Jesus? Now you can raise your hand. How many truly are following Jesus? All right. We're going to go through this tonight. And we're going to look to see if we're really, truly following Jesus. You know, here lately I've been doing a lot of preaching. When, when a pastor calls me, I, I'm so blessed when he, he calls me to preach. Because every time I do, I tell you all this every time. I get so much out of getting into the Word and trying to get prepared. Right, Pastor? I know he does too. It, it, it's, it's just something when you're studying you, and you're digging and you're asking Holy Spirit to, to show you and reveal things to you. It's things that you didn't even know. Yep. You, you, and listen to me. Every one of you can experience that on your own. You don't have to preach. Get in the Word. And ask the Holy Spirit to show you. And watch what He does. He does every time. I promise you, every time. So as I was preparing this, God asked me this question. He said, John, have you been changing the world? That's how I got the, the message. Have you been changing the world? And I had to, I had to question myself, Howard. I really did. I had to question myself. They said, how can I change the world? How can somebody like me change the world? And then God says, well, do you want to be more like Jesus? I said, every day. Every day I want to be more like Jesus, Pastor. Every day I want to be more like Jesus. He says, if you truly do want to be more like Jesus, then you will change the world. Amen. What did Jesus come here to do? What was he said? Why did God send his only son here? I, you can say, what's that picture? Save our souls. That's the biggest thing. But he sent him here to change the world that he created. Not the, not the trees, not the birds, me yes. Amen. and you. Amen. He come to change us to be better for him, to live better. And he says when, when, when he left, when he went on that cross, when he rose on the third day, and when he ascended into heaven, he looked back and says, you do what I did. He told his disciples, you do what I did. Listen, if you're a saved person, you're his disciple. He's telling you, he's telling me to do what I did. And my question tonight, are we doing that? Are we truly doing that? You know, I had to say to God, I think I am. I, I think I'm doing what you do. He says, are you going out? And, and we, I'm going to probably be preaching before I get into the message, but God just told me to do this. Are we going out 
Are we going into Walmart? Are we going into to our workforce places? Are we going into to work? We go to the restaurant at or whatever we do. Are we going out and let people see who we really are? Are we really showing them we are for Jesus? Is, is our walk telling people that we honor Jesus? When we go sit down at a meal at a restaurant, are we open hands and praying or just praying and thank God for your meal? Or you thought, no, let's don't do that. They don't matter. Let's just eat. There's a lot of Christian people that does that. I've seen it. And I've seen, I've, I've been so proud of some that I see blessing their food and praying. But what are we doing? What are we going to do to change the world? Listen, I, I preach this every time I preach. We're the generation that Jesus is coming back to get. We are that generation. You, you cannot prove that we're not, but I can prove that we are. I can go to the Word and prove to you that this generation will not pass, and we're that generation. Now, if, if God chose us, listen to me, church. If God chose us, each and every one of you can raise your hand. If He chose us before He come back to do what He did while He was here, is He disappointed? I'm just asking that question. I'm looking at everybody around. I had to look myself in the mirror. Is he disappointed? Because to me, this is the biggest thing in history since Adam and Eve until now. That's the biggest thing that's going to happen is when Jesus comes back when that horn blows and we're raptured out there. That is the biggest thing that will ever happen in this world. And he chose us to do it. And he says for us to do what he did, are we doing it? Are we doing it? Let's go, Lord, in prayer before we start. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Thank you for sending your Son. Thank you, Jesus, for, for just helping us to understand tonight what it is to change this world, just like you was here on this earth, how you came to change our hearts, to change our minds, to change each and every one of us to where we are today with you. And God, we're called by you to go out into this world and change people, change their ways, their acts, their thoughts, their minds, their hearts to accept you in their heart. That is the purpose that we're here today before that trumpet sounds. And my question is, God, are you satisfied with what we're doing or are you disappointed? I pray tonight, Lord, whoever's listening on Facebook, whoever's here tonight, that we examine our hearts and ourselves to really come down and say, Jesus, are you satisfied with me or are you disappointed in me? God, I know we all mess up, but the labors are few and you're getting ready to blow that horn and God, we need to get ready. We need to be where we need to be. We need to do what we're supposed to do. And I pray right now, God, that you touch everybody's heart, that you touch their minds, that you touch their everything that's about them, that they'll be obedient to, to do what you've called them to do, especially me, Lord. God, I love you so much, and I thank you. And I pray tonight that every ear is open to hear your word, and their hearts are ready to receive it, and their mind is being cleaned out right now to let something in that you want to show them tonight. God, we love you, we praise you, and we give it all to you tonight, Lord. It's all about you, it's all for you, and it's all going to be you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Matthew 28, 18 through 19, I want you to look at what we're talking about. What do you see up there in the picture? The world. What's it say? That's what God's taught us to do. That's what Jesus came here to do. That's what he's telling us to do tonight. To go. And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to me. 
And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to him. When Jesus left, he says, I give you everything that I've got, and you can do more than I can do. So if Jesus had the power to walk up to anybody and touch them and heal them, or if he had the power to walk through here and a lady touch his garment and, and she was dried up with the issue of blood just like that, that was power that Jesus had. If we've got that same power, why isn't it working today? We just got through saying, everybody raise their hands, that listen, if we're, we're going to do just what Jesus did. We're going to change the world. We got the power that Jesus, that he has, and we can do what Jesus did. And greater things that we can do than he did. Are we doing it? There's a problem, church, I'm going to show you here shortly. There's a problem why it's not happening. God revealed it to me so strong this past week. There's a big problem why it's not happening. Listen to me. This church, uh, Open Arms Church, I really believe has the power of Jesus so strong in here that the walls is going to shake pretty soon. I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not saying that because I go to Open Arms Church and I'm not saying that because I'm preaching tonight. But I believe that when I see the baptized, the water filled in there and, and, and people are getting saved and they're getting baptized on, on a regular basis, I'm serious. I don't know of any church that does that. I've heard of any church that does that. We're constantly baptizing people there because we're doing what Jesus told us to do. Now, the, the, wait a minute. I, I'm, I'm probably going to get you some of you upset. But we're not doing what we're supposed to do. We're doing, Pastor, we are. We're doing what we're supposed to do in here. But what are we doing out there? Into the world. What are we doing out in the world? And we'll, I'm going to show you some parts here in a minute. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. When you go anywhere, I don't care where it is, God can let you go on vacation, might let you go on a cruise. Are you reaching people? When you go there. Listen to me. Wherever Jesus and his disciples went. They was all over different places. And every time they went. Someone got saved. Thousands come. So you're telling me. That when you go on vacation. When you're out there with the, with the cows. When you're working. No matter where you're at. The factory. Wherever you're at. Wherever you go to do. You can't tell someone about Jesus? Seriously? Listen, what I'm preaching to you tonight is God preached to me. He spanked me this week. I'm serious. God says, I'm, I'm tired of fooling around. God allowed this church to, to, to shut down the county snow. It was for a reason. He didn't, he didn't just cause it to happen. I don't believe that. But he allowed it to happen. He allowed this church to, to stop and all other churches when the coronavirus hit. He allowed it to happen. It was for a reason. What are we doing for Jesus? What are we doing for Jesus, church? I know everyone else can raise their hand. I'm doing the best I can. I'm doing the best I can. But are we really? See, I have to say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And he's laid it on my heart. Are you sorry when someone goes to hell and you're supposed to went over there and told them about Jesus? Is that my answer for all that? If God leads, leads me to go somewhere and tell somebody and I don't do it, He's going to hold me accountable for that. And he's going to hold me and Pastor more accountable than any of you here because of what he's called us to do. That's the reason Pastor gets up here and preaches like he does and cries like he does. Listen, I have been around so many preachers in my life, so many pastors in my life. In, in the mass, I was around 3,000 people that was in the mass, but I have never seen pastors cry as much as me and this one does. I have never. I, I'm just being serious. I have never. 
But it's because of our hearts for you all. It's because of our hearts we want the best. We want what God has done here when he sent his son for that reason. We want that for each and every one that's out in this world. We need to wake up. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Our biggest problem, listen to me church, this is the big problem. Why we're not healing people. Why things are not being done like God planned for it to be done. The, why this generation was chosen to be here before the trumpet sounded. Fear. Fear. Now there's two different types of fear. I want you to realize that every one of us in here has been afraid before. Amen? If somebody was coming out that back door right now while I'm preaching to you and jump at me, I'm going to jump. It's going to scare me. I'm going to be afraid because I wasn't used to that moment. I expect that to happen. The fear that I'm talking about is when John Russell is called to go to somebody's house that's got coronavirus. They don't know Jesus and they want me to come to that house and walk through that door and go in there and tell them about Jesus. Do I have that kind of fear that I wouldn't do it? I want you to think if somebody calls you right now and you know that they're even dying with the coronavirus. They haven't got long to live because of this virus. It's so bad. And they called you and say, come to my house. My husband or my wife is dying and they don't know Jesus. I want you to think about Peter in the boat. Everybody knows that story. That's a true story. When Peter and Jesus come walking on the water, they was afraid, and listen to me, I would have been afraid. That's the kind of afraid that somebody jumps out at you. That's not fear, that was afraid. Let me tell you what the fear is. It's when Peter says to Jesus, if that's truly you, command me to come out to the water. And Jesus said, all in one word, come. And Peter had no fear. And he stepped out on that water water and he walked to Jesus and then all of a sudden all of a sudden he started sinking because he took his eyes off of Jesus. That's the kind of fear I'm talking about. If somebody calls me to go to that person and I walk over to that door and I'm, and I'm thinking God you got this and the minute I open that door and I look and then my heart starts pounding because I quit thinking about what Jesus is the purpose of that the purpose is of all soul. It's not for the healing of that person. Am I going to go through that door? Or am I going to fall into the water like Peter did because of my fear? Can I just pray for him out here? Can I just talk to him out here? Think about that just a minute. Because, see, God got a hold of me this week. Said, John, would you do that? And the sad part of it, I had to think about it. And I said, Oh Lord, forgive me. Send me right now. I'm ready to go. I don't care who it is. I'm ready to go. I'm not going to pray for their healing. I'm going to pray for their salvation. I'm going to tell them about Jesus. The healing will come next. However, God chooses. That's when the healing comes. Church, we need to take the fear off of us and trust God. What's he saying? Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. How many in here truly has Jesus Christ in their heart? Well, if you do, you let the Holy Spirit come in there. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit cannot be divided. They are going with you. I don't care what God sends you to. I don't care what disease is out there. I don't care what hurts out there. He's got you going. He's with you. He will go before you. He will take care of you. You've got the blood of Jesus over top of you. You need to be obedient to do it. We don't need no fear. Listen. There's so many people who's going to stand before God. 
God and say, I was, I didn't want to catch that. I didn't want that. And Jesus said, wait a minute. I give you the power. Yeah. He did. He gave us the power. Hallelujah. We're not. That's why we're not seeing nothing happen, church. That's the reason we're not seeing it happen. Because of the fear. And we don't, we've got that power. Listen, don't take my word for it. Look it up. Look it up. Don't take my word for it. It's right there. You've got the same power. Romans 12, 1 through 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Everybody do this. I miss this with pastors. Don't do it. He told me this when he first came here. I thought he was nuts. And now I want to do it all the time. Because I'll be going to, I'll be inside the, in my house and, and Satan will break something in my mind. I said, get behind me. Get that out of my mind. I do. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Perfect will of God. God's will is perfect. His will is perfect. He gave us this body to carry around Holy Spirit. Are we taking care of this body? Are we doing like Jesus would do? I, I had to do the same thing. PJ, I, I'm sorry. I'm not doing like I should. I'm striving to do better each and every day. I'm getting just a little closer each and every day. We're never going to be perfect, church. Don't let, I'm not trying to sit here and preach being perfect to you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just telling you that each day of our life, we need to do away with this body, this flesh. Die to this body, to this flesh. And let Holy Spirit take you to that next level. Spiritually, you need to grow. Physically, you need to grow. But spiritually, you need to grow more than the flesh. You've got to give it up. Renew that mind. Get your mindset on Jesus. Not on the world. Listen. We've got to live in this world. Every one of us has got to live in this world till, till Jesus takes us home. We've got to physically be in this world. But spiritually, we better not be. Spiritually, we better not be. Physically, we are. Spiritually, we better not be. And listen to me. If you're spiritually not in the world, then it's a whole lot easier to live in this world. Physically. It is. It's a whole lot easier to live in this world physically if you live in it spiritually. Everybody agree? Amen. Praise the Lord. I've done this before. I, my wife put this up once before and, and it just touches my heart because that's where we all need to be. On our knees. Praying to God. Philippians 4, 6 through 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, but in everything, by prayer, everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You want to change this world? Get on your knees. You want to change this world? Get in God's Word. You want to change this world? Be more like Jesus? Clean your mind out. If you want to change this world, and you want to see great things happening, do exactly what the Word says. Don't take my, me for the Word. Look it up. Get into it yourself. I'm just, I'm just a teacher that God's using. Holy Spirit is doing the teaching. He's just using my mouthpiece right now. I've told you this before, and I mean it. I have no college education. I'm dumb as a rock when it comes to a lot of things. Holy Spirit is doing the teaching. So you take it however you want it. 
I love you all. And I hate, I, sometimes it's hard. You ask pastor. It's hard to preach hard sometimes. Why are we doing it here lately so much? Because the trumpet is getting ready to sound, Pastor. It's getting ready to sound. And he says, go out into this world. Do like me. When he was here, how many of us was willing to go on vacation, have a good time, but to win a lost soul way there? How many of us is willing to go to your workplaces? Hey, I love this. How many are willing to go to your workplaces and let people see how you really are? And I want you to really be truthful like you are here tonight. I want you to be the same out in the world. Listen, every one of us is going to get hurt by somebody. Every one of us has already been hurt by somebody. We're going to talk about something else. We're not finished yet. We're getting ready to close on this. We're getting ready to start up something else. And it's about love. Anybody love me back there? I love every one of you. I love every one of you. I love every one of you here. I, love, I do. I, I don't have no enemies. I, I'm serious. I have no enemies. You know, the month of February is about love. Am I right? Valentine's Day. This is the past. The whole month of February is about love. The thing I don't understand is every day of your life should be about love. It should be just one month. Every day of your life should be about love. Now, I'm going to show you some scripture on that. Don't underestimate the power of love. Don't underestimate the power of love. I'm seeing more smiling faces right now. We're the ones that got masks off anyway. <laughs> Can't tell that the rest of y'all. You might be sticking your tongue out of that. Probably... <laughs> Don't underestimate the power of love. Let me tell you about love. It can change the whole world. It can change the whole world. It can change marriages. It can change people getting ready to go through a divorce. It can change people who've been mad at one another for years. Daddies, bad kids, kids, bad as mom, dads. It can change anything if you let the power of love do his work. Amen. And I'm going to show you scripture. I'm not just showing you a picture of a heart and let me see that. I'm going to show you scripture. Amen. That way you can't say, this is what John said was the truth. You'll see it, see it for yourself. First John 4, 7 through 8. Beloved. Who's the beloved? Amen. We got all kinds of beloved. All right. He's, talk, he's talking. Listen. He's talking to every one of us. Amen. He's talking to every one of us. So, beloved. Don't be putting your arms around her either. Yeah. Let us love one another. For love is of God. You're going you're gonna to like this. And everyone that loveth is born of God. And knoweth God. Now listen to this part. This is the kicker. It's kind of sad, but you got to really think about this. He that loveth not, knoweth not God. For God is love. Alright, this is where it's going to kind of get a little deep. Has anybody hurt you? Can you love the person you just divorced? Come on. Hey. She got three lovers up there. I want you to be serious on this. You're going to have me laugh. Hey, I put your hand around her neck. God, you know, y'all think I'm fibbing, but I'm not. God showed me it was going to be a good time tonight. He showed me. I mean, he just said, John, be obedient. You're going to see a good time tonight. And I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. y'all are not, I'm having a good time. Well, truthfully, seriously, if you cannot love the one you just divorced, 
there's a problem. If you cannot love the one that stole some money from you, there's a problem. If you cannot love the one that maybe just cheated on you and you're not even married, there's a problem. If you cannot love a mom or a daddy that said something bad about you or put you in a bad place or, or, or hurt you in, in a physical or, or maybe financial way, there's a problem. Everything I've said is true. Everything I said, somebody probably in here has done or has had it done to you. And when it comes to unforgiveness, and you don't love them, he says, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Listen, it's okay. It's okay when somebody do, do you wrong to hurt. It's okay to tell them, I'm not going to allow that to happen no more. But when you won't talk to them or speak to them or you hate them or you don't want to be around them or you can't stand them, then I've got a problem. Because I'm going to listen to what God says, not what Satan throws at you. And he tells you love them no matter what. Listen to me, church. Listen to me. If we're going to go and do the first part that I talked about, change this world, if we're going to do that, then God says bring in the love. Because it takes the love to do the first part with Jesus. See, he gave us on his son. We're going to close on this after a while. Maybe 2 o'clock in the morning. But we'll hey, we've got we to make up for all this lost time, y'all. But seriously, if we have got to love, and we've got to care about people, if we're truly going to change the world, no matter how bad they've done with you, or hurt you, or said about you, or anything, it don't matter. You're going to have to love them. Amen. You're going to have to love them. You're going to have to let it go. And then God can use you just like Jesus did. Just like God sent his son and what he did in this world. Let me tell you, who is it that God didn't love? Tell me. I want you to show me some word in the Bible where somebody done something that he didn't love. Can you show me, Pastor? I mean, I, I, can't, I, I can't find it. I thought, does anybody? Me and Pastor can't find it. Anybody else? Show it to me. <laughs> I've got to have another drink of water. That page? Don't leave me. Don't, don't take your ink pen right button in there in, DJ. It's like when you play down. <laughs> I second that. Now listen, Facebook, if you're not here, I'm telling you, you, you need to get here. You'll have a good time, amen? You'll have a good time. Thank God you, you, if you're watching Facebook, I'll praise the Lord. I don't know, it, it just said, I just need to stop for a minute. We need to pray for Brother David. Yeah. Let us everybody just bow your head. Lord, we lift up David to you, Lord. We just know that he's went through his surgery and everything's turned out good. And I just know that he wants to be here. He even told Pastor that he even asked the doctor, could he come here right after the surgery? So God, we just, we lift him up. We just know he wants to be here so bad. But God, he's here. We're there with him and he's here with us. Spiritually, Lord, we know we're, we're together. So God, I pray right now you just have a quick recovery and get back to church soon and let him just completely be taken care of now, Lord. Heal him completely. Be with Virginia, Lord, as she takes care of him and him there. Lord, just bless her too. God, we just love him and praise you in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Pray the Lord. I miss him when he's not here. I mean, I, I know everybody does. We miss everybody that people can't make it. He that loves not, knows not God, for God is love. Just remember, always forgive. Amen. Always forgive. You don't have to let the person keep doing things to you. I'm not saying that. But you've got to forgive them how many times? Seven times. Seven times, seven, all the time, every time. You, you got to, every time. You, but you've got to love them. You don't have to agree with them. You don't have to accept what they're doing. But you've got to love them. And if you do, guess what? God, you, you love God, God loves you. 1 John 4, 18, there is no fear in love. You know, we talked about fear a while ago, right? Right? Well, this is how you get rid of the fear. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear hath torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. What have these guys been telling you? 
If you want to go and pray for somebody or, or do something, have faith and trust in God. Let love take you. See, when I went to go pray for that boy, I'm talking about a girl, whoever it could be, I didn't go pray, like I said, for the healing. My heart was for the soul. That they knew Jesus. That's the love. That's what he's talking about here. That's the true love. We need to love, church. We need to love. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We need to love more. We can take care of the fear. When you get sad or get hurt, you know, we miss church. I was kind of sad. I mean, I did. I just, it just wasn't the same. You know, listen to the pastor. I ain't heard him singing. I said, Praise the Lord, everybody. He does his own music too. I like it. But, well, you know, listen to me. It's still not like being here in fellowship, is it, Pastor? Even when you're preaching up here on the, uh, on the video, it's still not like being with the family. Amen. Being there. We just need to, we just need to love one another so much that, that God's going to keep these doors open and it's going to grow more and more bigger. Amen. Amen. We just need to keep that love and that hope. John 13, 34 through 35 says, A new commandment I give it to you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men, how many, how many is all? All. Everybody. All. Know that ye are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. God took twelve, I mean Jesus took twelve men to turn this world upside down. Amen. And we've got at least thirty people here tonight. Amen. Look what we can do. Amen. Look what we can do if we will be obedient to do it. I'm serious, we can fill this building up more than we can imagine. We have to have Four or five services, Pastor. Could get them all in here. If we'll do what Jesus told us to do. Like I said, we got the same power that he had. He gave it to us. It ain't, it ain't what we got or what we did. is what we got through him. He gave it to us. We didn't deserve it. But he says, I want you to do it. And you'll see my disciples. If you have love for one another. Commandment I give unto you that you love one another. We have got to love one another no matter how bad you hurt me or how I hurt you. You know, I thought about this. I, I just want to use, you know, Satan. Let me, let me tell you about Satan. I know all of you know. But the biggest thing Satan and, and Pastor of back in 100% without me even asking. Satan attacks marriages more than anything else he attacks. He's done it from the very beginning of Adam and Eve. He's doing it right now, he Pastor. He attacks marriages. If he can mess a marriage up, my goodness, you won't want to come to church and be too mad, too aggravated. I'm not going to church. I don't want people to see me being mad. That's just one of his tools that he uses. And I thought about this. You know, if, if somebody went through a divorce that was friends of mine or came to church and I knew them, and, and, and I don't know which one done the wrong. Maybe she cheated on him or he cheated. I don't look at that. I used to. I used to be one of the world. Well, who do they think? That's awful. I left it too. That's what I used to say. I'm serious. But God got a hold of me. He got a hold of me, church, and he says, I love that person. I'm serious, Pastor. I love that person. And I think, well, if, if somebody comes to church and went through a divorce, Am I going to love and hug them even though they was the one that cheated? Huh? I better? Who am I to judge that person? We're, we're here to heal, to love and heal. Amen? We're here to love and heal. Not to judge and condemn. Love and heal. So, your mind right now might be doing this again. Because you might say, I think some of you right now, Holy Spirit just showed me that you're thinking about a couple right now that's went through a divorce. And you're thinking, well, I thought that person did it. I heard that they was done wrong. Probably should have left it. Let God be the judge of that. Let's pray for them. Let's bring them in here and love on them. Let's tell them the truth. 
God loves them no matter what they did. See, the worst thing about us Christians, we like to choose what sin is bad, what sin is not. We do. We like to choose that. And God told me once before, a long time ago, sin is sin in my eye. It's all bad. And my, my son come and took it all away. Oh, yeah. All you got to do is ask me tomorrow. Yeah. Amen. Romans 12, 9 through 10 says, don't just pretend. So I love this scripture, Pastor. I, I've read it before and never really, God spoke to me to the other night. Don't just pretend to love others. Let it, I'm going to stop there. It is so easy. I, I'm, mm. I'm going to take off my oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm just getting filled. So, I mean, it's just chill bumps right now. If I took my shirt off, you know, we don't quite leave, but I have chill bumps all over my body right now. I'm serious. I just, I feel the Holy Spirit so strong. God gave me discernment years ago. And I'm not here bragging on this because sometimes discernment, is, 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 it hurts. As you know, because you'll see things or hear things before it even happens. But God gave me this sermon about being calm. There's not a person in this church that can calm me. I'm serious. I'm not bragging on myself. I'm just saying, Holy Spirit, God Himself gave me the sermon to tell when somebody's calm. And there's been a lot of conners that's been through this church, through other churches that I've been through. And hey, I, I don't judge them. I just, I won't agree with them or I'll say, you know, whatever, but I know. And I'm going to tell you a story, what God did one time. I was in another church, and we was in an elders meeting, and the pastor brought up this name to be an elder. And we had, I think, five elders at that time. He wanted a six elder. And the five elders that was there, and the pastor, or four elders, I was the fifth one, and the pastor voted to bring this guy in as elder. Holy Spirit told me, he done showed me that this person was common. And I didn't say that to the church. Now, I'm not saying no name, if you won't hear, if you don't know, nobody will never know who I'm talking about. I said no. And the rest of them said yes. Of course, the majority of rules, I was fine. I didn't get mad and get upset. Didn't say nothing. Two weeks later, the pastor come in at the next meeting. He said, guys, I was wrong. He said, something happened. And we can't let this guy come in as elder. I didn't jump up and down and say, I told you. I didn't say nothing. You know what I did? Under my voice, I said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's all I did. I promise. That's all I did. I said, thank you, Jesus. Now down the road later, years on down, this person turned his life around and he's, he's God's using it in a mighty way. And I thank God for that. And I tell you the truth, I've been around him since and I felt the Holy Spirit show me that he cleaned himself up and everything's good now. But I'm saying that to say this. You can fool people a lot. You can but there's some people that God's gave discernment to that you cannot fool. Amen. You just can't. It's not that their, their choice is what the, the gift that God's gave them. So be careful and be real. Amen? Amen? Be careful and be real. We all mess up. We all do wrong. And God forgives you if you turn back to Him. But be careful. And don't judge. God says it's already judged the fruit. And that's what I was doing with this one person. I want you to think of judging this person. But I wasn't, but I love the person. But I don't see the fruit. Love each other with genuine affection and take delight in honoring each other. And it, isn't it good? I'll get corrected here in a minute. I'll use the word and. But isn't it good to truly just put your arm around somebody and love them? Uh, that's what I love about this church. You know, until the coronavirus, but we're getting pretty back to normal. We're, we're loving. But when the coronavirus stopped, stopped it, was it different? Yeah. It was different. And that showed me right there that that's not from God. I mean, we had to do it. We were doing what we're supposed to do. But that tells me that wasn't from God. God wants us to love one another. 
He wants us to hug one another. He wants us to care for one another. He wants us to be real to one another. That's what he's telling us here. Don't just pretend, church. If you want to change this world like Jesus did, don't pretend. Love them. Don't matter what they've done, love them. First Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. It's at 2 o'clock. I'm probably getting late. Love suffers long and it's kind. I know Pastor uses this. I do too. I've done several weddings. And I use this one scripture in weddings. It just, it touches me and them too as a marriage. But love suffers long and it's kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, church. It will listen to me. I don't care if you truly, I don't care if you're having a problem with the marriage right now or not. If there's something going on in your, your marriage, whether it's finances, whether it's just when you're working all the time, I don't know. You know, Satan gets in there in any way he can. Put love there. You love them no matter what. You take time. We need to take time for our spouses. We need to take time for our children. We need to take time for our grandchildren. And we need to take time for our church family. Amen? Amen. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. But love won't. But love won't. It never fails. Everybody stand up. I got one last scripture. And this to me is the best scripture in the whole Bible. And everybody knows it by heart. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Give God a hand. Hallelujah. So my question is, is again, the same as it was at the beginning. Are you ready to change the world? Amen. Do you know how to change the world now? You gotta love. You gotta be honest. You cannot judge. You got to be willing. And you got to be obedient. And you cannot, listen to me, listen to me, this is the big one. You cannot have fear. When God calls you to go do something, you've got to be willing to go out into the world and do what he tells you. Because I'm telling you, the trump is getting ready to stand. Are you ready? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'm, I'm going to ask you if you want to come up and pray. If you want to sit back there. I, it don't, it's up to you all tonight. I'll be at the altar praying. If you need to talk to the pastor or one of the elders, 